I tell you, man, oh man, I wish I had a time machine. If you were like me, when I was a kid, I'd walk up to my favorite MK cabinet at my local arcade. Unfortunately, my pocket was always empty. I had no cash, no money, no quarters, and I had nothing to do and no choice but to sit there and stare at the attract mode and wish I could play the game or, or wish the game was on free play. Uh, but alas, that was not true. I have no time machine, and I can't go back and tell myself, hey, don't worry, here is a code you can do. So it turns out that there's an exploit that you can use on these recently discovered EJB menus where you can actually go up to any MK2 cabinet or MK3 cabinet. MK1 doesn't work and I'll explain why later. Uh, where you can actually turn the game from costing money to free play mode. So much to the dismay of probably many arcade operators out there and probably even some individual owners that have their machine set for pay to play, uh, you can actually access the EJB menu and turn the game from costing money into free play. So the way this works is you can see that I have no option for game adjustment. I have the EJB menu up here running. There is no option for game adjustment. But if you go to diagnostic tests and you do a CPU board test, under normal circumstances when the CPU board test is done, the board will revert or go back into the service menu. So you bring, it, you bring up the service menu, you do a CPU board test, and it will go back into the service menu to allow you to do more options. But with this, when you enter the EJB menu, the board doesn't know that you're not in the regular service menu. So you do the CPU board test, and when it's done, it reverts back to the regular service menu. So I'll go ahead and let this go through here. I'm going to skip past the actual entire check. But you do the CPU board test. The ROMs are red because I have a hack installed, but so just disregard that. But now it goes back to here. But this, the deal here is that this is no longer the EJB menu. This is the regular Ultimate MK3 test menu. So now I have an option for game adjustment. You see the Panacho Miller game's gone and the, and the Fatality Demonstration. So now we're back in the regular service menu that you normally would access by pressing the button behind the coin door. So we go to Game Adjustment. You see I have a tab for Free Play. Boom, Free Play. I have it currently set to Free Play via the dip switches, but I can turn it off. Dip switch, no. Dip switch, yes. So that's how you do it. So you can walk up to any MK2 or 3 and turn the machine onto free play and play away at your heart's content, much to the dismay of a lot of arcade operators. So this only works on MK2 and MK3. So I'll show it working on MK2. I'll show it in action on there, but MK1 doesn't work. And when I get past MK2, I'll explain that on MK1. Um, that's basically it. There is something I want to mention first is that on, I have an extra board here. There are two rows of dip switches. You have SW1 for switch bank 1 and SW2 for switch bank 2. So let me go back here. You see I have a dip switch test. Now you'll notice that on switch number 1, switch number, uh, it's actually a switch bank 1, dip switch number 8 says dip switch coinage. Um, if you walk up to the machine and try and do this, this uh, exploit and it doesn't work, Sometimes it won't let you, and when I do MK2 here, you'll see what I'm talking about. Uh, on these boards here, if the operator has switch number 8 on switch on uh, switch bank 1, you can see it corresponds to switch number 8 on dip switch bank 1, dip switch coinage. If um, this is set to on, that means that the coinage is decided by the dip switches and not the menu. So if you go into this and it won't let you change it to free play, it gives you an error. It's, it uh, does, a, I believe, a, uh, a scream from one of the characters. One of the characters goes, oh, and does a scream. And it won't let you change it to free play. It's because the operator has the board set for dip switch coinage. And if the switch is set to off, you can use the menu to set the coinage and how much it costs and free play and whatnot. Uh, but if this switch is set to on, you will not be able to do this trick because the board is set to run the pricing from these selections and not the onboard system. So I had to explain that a bit because if you ever try this, it doesn't work. That's why. All right, so let me get set up for MK2. You'll see how it works on MK2 here. One second. Okay, so here's MK2. I have the overhead light off because it's a giant glare in the back of the screen. So uh, you can see MK2 EJB menu. 
I go to, uh, there's no option here for game adjustments, just like the MK3 options. I go to diagnostic tests. I go to CPU board test. And we'll go ahead and skip past this again. Uh, you're going to see the revision ROMs are red because I have a hack installed. So now it should have reverted to the regular, the regular service menu. There you go. Now it no longer says EJB menu. Uh, so we can get, now I have game adjustment. I can go down here to game adjustment. Free play. You can see it says dip switch. Yes, all my machines are set to free play via the dip switches, so I don't have to worry about the battery going bad and reverting it back to non-free play. But this is what I'm talking about. If uh, I, since I have the machine set to free play via the dip switches and not the CMOS settings, which is what this stuff is, uh, it won't let me change it. So that's the sound you're going to hear if the if this doesn't work for you. But in, no, in normal circumstances, uh, if this was set to, if every single dip switch, let me get that board back out again, it's easier for me to show you. If every single one of these dip switches is set to off, which is by default, these are all off. If these are all set to off, then you should be able to do this. If any of these are set to any other position other than off, you may not be able to. But this is how you can do it. If it is doable, that's how you do it. So that's explained. So I should, uh, let me actually do this here real quick. I want to see what this says. Okay, yeah, see I have it set to free play via the dip switches, so it won't let me do any, any changes to it. Um, UMK3 doesn't care apparently, but MK2 does. But that's it guys. Um, now as far as MK1 goes, you can see I still have the other menu up there. Uh, as far as MK1 goes, let me get the tripod set up so it's easier to explain. So, uh, alright, there we go. You can see I'm in the EJB menu. If I go down here to Diagnostic Tests, CPU Board Test. Now you saw that MK2 and MK3, when the board test was complete, it went back into the service menu. Well, it does not do that for MK1 because there's an actual switch that you have to have on or off. Uh, MK2 and MK3 have a momentary push button and it stays in the menu forever until you exit out of it. Well, MK1 has a slide left and right. So you see there, instead of going back into the service menu, it just goes into the game. So you won't be able to do this on MK1 uh, because you have to be able to access behind the coin door and turn it into the service menu with the switch needs to be on. Uh, so you can't do it on MK1, so only MK2 and MK3, and eventually probably MK4 if we ever figure out what the EJB menu code is on MK on MK4. But so there you have it. Uh, if you guys ever approach an MK2 or MK3 cabinet in the wild, and you want to play it for free, and it's not set for free play, now you know how. So <laughs> probably going to be a lot of angry people, but like I say, it's just too good not to share this secret. So thanks for watching, and let me know if you guys ever end up having to use this. Thanks. See you later.